Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Evelyn. Thank you for listening to episode one of Prayer Clinic. In this first episode, we will be talking about five myths about prayer. Five myths concerning prayer. People have different ideas and religious thinking depending on their upbringing. But for this first episode, I will touch on about five myths concerning prayer which can actually hinder you from effective praying. The first myth I want to talk about is that some people believe that you need a particular place in order to pray. They believe that if you are not in a church building or a synagogue or a temple or on a mountain or by a riverside or the seaside, then your prayers are not effective. It is interesting how we find this very um, ideology come up when the woman at the well met the Lord Jesus Christ. Among the things that they talked about, the lady was like, you Jews proclaim that unless we seek God upon a particular mountain, he will not hear us. You say that there is a set mountain where we can go and find God. And in response to her question, Jesus said, as a matter of fact, the days are coming and now is that men, God who is a spirit, is seeking for men to worship him in spirit and in truth. So it will not be on this mountain or on that other mountain. That everywhere you are, you can actually call upon God. Because he is a spirit and a supreme being, he is at everywhere at the same time. So whether you are in Japan, whether you are in America, or you are on an African continent, wherever you are, God is there. So you don't need to um, say to yourself that I have to be in this particular location before God will hear me. Wherever you are, God is there and you can call upon him. The second myth that I want us to also talk about is that some believe that if you are going to pray, you must take a certain posture. They believe that when you are going to pray, you must either kneel, you must either lie prostrate, you must bow your head to the, um, the ground, or some other forms of postures. And if you are not doing that, then your praying is not effective. As a matter of fact, we take those postures so in reverence to God. It's a personal preference that we take so we will reverence God for what we are doing. But to say that if you are not in that posture, your prayer is not effective, that is not true. What the one ingredient that is very, very important for effective praying is to have faith in your heart. The Bible says that when anyone who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So having faith towards God is the important key that you need and not the posture that you take. There are times that you can find yourself in a situation that you wouldn't even have the time and the opportunity to go into a posture. As a matter of fact, I recall one um, incident where I was involved in a very terrible car accident. And I saw the car when it, it skipped off the road. And so the little that I could remember, I screamed, Jesus, and then I started praying. And for what uh, the rest, I cannot even recall. But when it was all said and done, there were four of us. How we got out of that vehicle, it was just by sheer miracle. The car was totally destroyed. And you cannot believe that People survived. I mean, not one of us was hurt. But we didn't even have the chance to take a posture. So that is, I'm saying, I'm sharing this story so you know there are situations that you, you wouldn't even have the luxury to take a posture. So don't let that hinder you 
wherever you are, whether you are sitting in your car, flying in the airplane, wherever you are, commune with God in your heart if it is necessary for you to pray. The third myth that I want to also debunk is that some people believe that God hears pastors or bishops or archbishops more than he hears the ordinary congregation member. So if they have a need, instead of going to God in prayer, they will go to their pastor and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not saying that going to your pastor and asking for prayers are wrong. It's not wrong in itself. But it becomes a problem when you have gotten to that place where you don't pray. Every situation that you face, unless you are knocking on the door of the pastor, you are not going to pray about the situation. You will have to pray as an individual, seek the face of God, because God will hear you as much as he will also hear the pastor. And because of this myth, some pastors have also taken advantage of their congregation members. So they will tell them stories like, bring an offering of a thousand dollars and I'll pray for you to become a billionaire. And you will find congregation members who are running with the little money that they have left in their accounts to go give to the pastor because he's going to pray for God to make them a millionaire. I want you to understand that millionaires are not made simply because the pastor prayed. Millionaires are made through hard work, through making wise investments. If you need prayer to become a millionaire, it's actually a prayer asking the Lord to give you divinely inspired ideas that you can put into practice, that you can actually um, work hard at it, and then the millions will flow in later. The fourth myth that I also want to share with you is that some also believe that there is a set time that you must pray. And they, for them, effective prayers are done at midnight, 12 midnight, or 4 a.m. at dawn, or maybe early morning. And any time after that, they don't believe it is effective. So if, let's say, you are somebody who works and you have a little bit of time during um, break time, and you want to sit in your car and pray, they don't think that you are doing effective praying by praying in the afternoon. But I'm here to let you know that the Bible says that we should pray without season. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. We see him setting the example when sometimes he will pray in the day, he will pray in the afternoon, he will pray in the evening, and sometimes, as a matter of fact, throughout the night. So finding the time to pray can be any time that is suitable for you. The fifth myth that I would also want to debunk is that some also say that, you know what, God even, even doesn't hear sinners. I'm a sinner, so I don't even need to pray because God will not hear me anyway. But I'm here to let you know that the Bible says that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So if you feel that you're, you, you are such a sinner and that God will not hear you, I'm here to uh, encourage you to know that it's even a good thing that you acknowledge that you are a sinner. You have a sinful nature and you need God. That is the more reason why you should pray and seek the face of God so that he will, hear, he will give you the grace to overcome that nature. And the Bible says that when we go to God in prayer and we acknowledge our sins and we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and we believe that he died and rose up again on the third day and we receive him into our hearts, then we have been reconciled back to God. And once we have been reconciled back to God, we have full 24-7 access to the presence of God. So we will go to him boldly in prayer and receive answers to our prayer. And even for believers, those who have been Christians for several years, 
sometimes some people will backslide and they will think that because they have committed sins, God wouldn't want to um, have them back. But have the example of the prodigal son at the back of your mind. That if for any reason you find yourself falling from grace, I want to encourage you to take up the pieces, take up from where you left off. Go back to God. Ask for cleansing. Ask for forgiveness. And he is faithful and just to forgive you, forgive all of us, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and restore us into fellowship one more time. So briefly, we have um, I've talked about five myths about prayer that you should Make sure that none of these things are in your belief system that will hinder you from effective praying. Number one, that you don't need a specific location to pray. You can pray anywhere at any time. Number two, I also want you to know that God hears both pastors and bishops and ordinary congregation members. So you don't need to pay somebody to make prayers on your behalf. Number three, you also must know that the posture you take in prayer is not the most important thing. So if you are in a place where you cannot um, take that posture, that should hinder you from praying. Because as I said, sometimes you get into situations and it should be instant prayer where you cry out to God for deliverance. Number four, that God, don't think that I have sinned, I have committed such a great sin that God will not hear me, so I don't even want to come to God in prayer. Restore your fellowship back to God. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, no matter what the nature of your sin, and be restored back to God. Pick up the pieces and hit the ground running because as a matter of fact, you even need more grace to help you in your weakness. So that's the more reason you have to go to God in prayer. And number five, the last but not the least, is that we can pray at any time. It can be morning, it can be noon, it can be evening, it can be night, it can be midnight, it can be dawn. Anytime, any day, anywhere. Remember that God is, has his hands widely open, ready to answer your prayers. I want to thank you so much, dear friend, for listening to episode one on the prayer myths. In episode two, I will actually be talking about eight practical ways to pray for the busy bee. I will give you practical examples, eight ways you can find time to pray. No matter how busy you are, you would you don't want to miss it. It will change your life. Thank you so much. Um, visit our Facebook page at Dr. Evelyn Ministries, and you will get the full download of the notes for this um, prayer myths. Visit our Facebook page. It is Dr. Evelyn Ministries. Once again, I'm your host, Dr. Evelyn. I will also want to encourage you that if you have a prayer request, submit it. I mean, email your prayer request to drevelyn.ministries at gmail.com. The email address again, drevelyn.ministries at gmail.com and email us your prayer request. Very soon, we are also going to be starting a live prayer conference which I'll give you the details. You will find the details on our uh, on our Facebook page. So remember to visit Dr. Evelyn Ministries. God bless you. And I will talk to you again on episode two.